97 Forerunner, 08 CRV. Ooh, 2011 Sonata with only 100,000 clicks on it. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just checking out what kind of vehicle I could purchase for myself for around 5,500 US dollars. And then I thought, vehicle? Who wants a vehicle for that kind of money? Meet the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 8000, a 5,500 US dollar graphics card. Yes, my friends, this is the most powerful and most expensive single GPU in their lineup. But what could possibly justify it? I will tell you after this message from our sponsor, Glasswire. Glasswire lets you instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off Glasswire at the link below. I wouldn't blame you for thinking that the dual Titan RTX GPUs in our Compensator 2020 build is the pinnacle of desktop GPU performance. I mean, watch, watch this, watch this guys, okay? So I've got a uh, live Blender viewport here. I'm just gonna switch to uh, the rendered view. Holy smokes, that's freaking incredible. As a digital artist or animator, being able to see what I'm working on in darn near real time opens up just about unlimited creative possibilities. I can change the color of my lighting and boom, I can see what that looks like in the reflections off the armor or his glasses or whatever the case may be. Uh, and I could change things like my lighting source. I could go from an area light to the sun. Um, let's see, what else can I do here? Oh yes, I can change the angle. You know, maybe we're more into like, you know, a sunset versus the sun being, you know, directly over top of him. Change our intensity. Oh man, it's so bright out, need these glasses. Changing gears to the junkyard scene, this is how long it takes without the AI acceleration that is built into the Titan. And you can see it's actually still quite noisy. We fire up our AI accelerated denoising, head over to our camera options here. Now we can play around with things like the focus distance. So check this out, I'm now focused on the cat helmet and you can actually see we've got a very filmic looking bokeh down behind it. This is a technique that animators use to make their animated films look and feel more like live action films where they can adjust the iris as well as the focus of the actual lens. And what it helps do is draw your attention to the correct part of the scene that you're supposed to be looking at. Like maybe this guy with the dialogue here is what we're supposed to be focused on. You can really see how it changes what I'm drawn to, depending on what's in focus. Now we fire up this test scene in Autodesk Maya. We're gonna switch over to the Arnold renderer. Now when you're rendering at this kind of detail level with this many light bounces, like look at these great subtle reflections in the armor. There's nothing that you can do to get game-like performance, you know, many, many frames per second, but being able to do it even this fast gives me a much better idea of what I'm working with when I make changes to my dude here or do debt. We have no way of knowing what gender the armor wearer is. Finally, we can look at our performance in a broader range of professional applications, including things like 3D rendering, but also things like uh, energy exploration, simulation, all that kind of good stuff. This is SpecViewPerf and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to run, which gives us plenty of time to talk about the actual subject of today's video. This sucker has 4,608 CUDA cores, 576 tensor cores. So those are for like AI and stuff. It's coming out. 76 ray tracing cores. It can be configured with up to two of them using the NVLink fingers on the top. And it's got a whopping 300 watt TDP, so that is the amount of power we would expect it to consume in your system. But wait, all of that is basically identical to the Titan RTX for more than double the price. What's going on here? Well, there are a couple differences. First up, the power plugs are at the back rather than the top of the board. This improves compatibility in certain low profile chassis and gives them room to put, ah, these connectors. So right there is the stereo connector. So you would use that if you were using your graphics solution for working in stereoscopic 3D. 
and the sync connector, which we've actually used in the past to sync up multiple quadros so they can all output as one gigantic mosaic display. So if you actually needed this much GPU horsepower on a gigantic video wall, this would be the only way to do that. Also, the display connectors on the cards themselves are actually slightly different. So instead of three display ports, a USB type C, their VR link thing, and an HDMI, we actually get four display ports along with VR link. The cooler is completely different. So instead of a tacky golden black dual fan affair, we've got a tacky silver, green, and black single fan affair. So this probably comes down more to the types of chassis they expect this card to be installed in, where it'd be more important to draw in your cool air over here and exhaust it out the back rather than recirculating it inside the case. Finally, the biggest, probably most relevant difference. Instead of 24 gigs of GDDR6 memory, this sucker has a whopping 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and it's ECC memory, which means that it's error checking and correcting. So while you wouldn't expect a solar event to cause a bit to flip in your memory all that often, on this one, when that happens, it should account for it and correct it. Enough chitter chatter though. Our before test is run. So it's time to shut this puppy down and see just what a $5,500 graphics card is capable of. Are you taking both cards out or are you just leaving one? Oh, I gotta take both out. Cause remember, these are equivalent solutions in terms of their cost. For the price of both of these and an SLI bridge, all I can get is one of these, so it better impress the pants off me. That's right, Brandon. It's possible that I will have no pants by the time we are done shooting this video. But only if it impresses the pants off me, so don't freak out yet. I mean, it could also scare the pants off me or disappoint the pants off me. Okay, there's a high possibility I will have no pants, Brandon. I think this might be the single most expensive component in the compensator. It somehow looks even gaudier than the Titans. Okay, I'm ready to... Oh, wait, no, no, shoot. So it's not as big of a deal as it used to be now that they have their studio drivers for the GeForce and Titan cards. But if we want to give this thing the absolute fairest shake, then I should really be installing the Quadro drivers, which include all the certifications for professional applications and some performance tuning, apparently. Quadro. Curious. I did expect the Quadro driver to be a slightly older version. So in this case, it's 436.30 instead of 442.50. But what I wasn't expecting was for it to be so much smaller. It's about 150 megs smaller than the GeForce driver less stuff included, I guess. So we're gonna do the same things that we did last time around, except I wanna see if it is any different. Well, just like before, without the AI denoising, it does take quite a while to render a new view of Blender Man here. But that's fine, you can turn that on. And that feels about the same. Okay, and GPU usage sitting in a comfy 20 to 25% range. Now we can play around with our lighting color again. Get some blue light on there. Maybe do something similar to last time. I mean, all this kind of feels the same when we're manipulating Blender Man here. Except this is the gotcha. So come on in here, guys. Over the last few years, the difference in features between GeForce and Quadro cards has actually narrowed. But where Quadro still stands alone is in the total amount of GPU memory. So this scene, loading it all in, only takes around 7.6 gigs of RAM. So what would happen is as soon as we load in a much, much larger, more complicated scene, and we exceed our 48 gigs, it would start to have to swap to system memory, which is quite a bit slower. Where the Quadro stands out is with two of them, using an NVLink bridge, you can have up to 96 gigs of RAM enabling you to load up gigantic scenes. And there might be some places where we do find performance differences. Let's go on. Well, I didn't expect a difference here and I didn't get one. So that's good. Yeah, that feels very similar. But once again, this scene only takes 10 gigs of GPU memory. So we're not constrained by it. Time to give SpecViewPerf a crack at this. Okay, here we go. So whether we're talking computer-assisted design where we see as much as a 
uh, 20, 25% performance improvement, or the medical imaging benchmark where actually it's getting close to double. It's about 70% faster. The Quadro really sets itself apart from our Titan setup because a lot of these workloads don't really benefit from a second GPU, much like, well, gaming. With that said, not once was our Quadro fully double the speed of our Titan setup. So if you were looking for a bang for the buck, I mean, you probably weren't, then this is not really what you're after. But if you're looking for the most validated thing that gives you the best performance and in certain edge cases, like when you need 96 gigs of RAM for a gigantic scene, it's basically what you're stuck with. Speaking of stuck with, you're stuck with this segue to our sponsor. Vessi Footwear. Vessi Footwear is 100% waterproof. Yes, my friends, you could actually dip it in water, even though it uses a nice, breathable knit material. You can walk through rain, snow, mud, and slush without worry. And on hot days, it'll keep you cool, and on cool days, it'll keep you warm. They're flexible and stretchy, kind of like wearing a second pair of socks, and they actually don't weigh that much more than socks. They're one of the lightest sneakers in the world at just 175 grams. They've got women's and men's styles in a wide variety of colors, and you can check them out at vessifootwear.com slash Linus Tech Tips. You can get $25 off using code Linus Tech Tips. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe check out the full video of The Compensator. You're looking for something else to watch. This machine is, come on. I don't have to tell you guys it's sick. Look at it. It's amazing. And now it's even more expensive. I got into computers before shaving, so it was like confusing to me that Nvidia had a card called the Quattro. I was like, not like the razor? Different razor. <laughs> I'm funny.